Hi guys, this is Vitaly with AFT Dispatch and A2C Logistics and in today's video I'd like to review the responses to a very interesting question someone posed in a Facebook group for truck drivers. The question was, why do owner operators fail? I thought it was very interesting and responses may be quite eye-opening for you. Hopefully they'll be helpful as well. Now before we get started, I'd like to ask you to please like the video, be sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a single release of our videos where every Friday we're talking about something that could benefit you in your trucking businesses in your trucking careers, as well as cover the loads we've successfully booked for our customers, consisting of leased owner operators, as well as carriers operating under their own MC authorities, running under our truck dispatch services. So thank you guys for the likes, let's jump in. As I mentioned, the, the answers to this question might be quite uh, eye-opening for you. Uh, if you are struggling with these areas, uh, in these areas, certainly this should provide you a little bit of guidance as to what you may be wanting to improve in your business. So what I did is I actually went through over 250 responses uh, hand by hand, I tabulated them into 10 different categories and I made a bar chart and a pie chart and I'm going to put these up uh, on our website. Uh, I'll have the, the, the link in the description below so make sure to click that. You know, it'll be a lot easier and a lot more digestible in a visual format. But basically what ended up happening was that they, they were asking, why, why do owner operators fail? And owner operators basically responded with, well, this is why we failed or this is why we see other people fail. And here are the responses. In number one, 33.1% of the respondents basically said that it was bad money management or poor money, money management. And basically what that means is that folks had a very difficult time in uh, differentiating between gross and net income. Money came in, they spent it. And that was a, a big, big problem. You know, poor money management will always put a business out, whether it's trucking or, or any other business. It could be, a, you know, an ice cream shop. It'll put you out of business. Cannot do that. Number two was maintenance costs. Uh, basically, this meant that either folks did not uh, did not allocate enough funds in order to uh, you know maintain their equipment, or they had a catastrophic failure. Did not set uh, aside some money, spent it with bad money management, and simply were put out of business. Definitely, they want to find yourself in that position. Next, we had a lack of planning. Lack of planning hit 11% of the responses. It was in a third place, and basically talked about really not having. Uh, you know, the, not having the, the vision, being able to look forward and say, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do in my business. What if the market goes down? What if the market is doing good? What areas are, are, are well? Did I put aside some money? Uh, is my truck, you know, lack of planning. Uh, now, the next one in the fourth place was not knowing operating costs. Now, I, that one was surprising to me because I really thought that would hit a much higher position considering that on a daily basis, I talk to, you know, owner ops, I talk to uh, carriers, company drivers. I talk to all kinds of truck drivers, basically. And what I hear consistently and what I've seen over the years is that folks don't know their operating costs. You really should know your operating costs. You know, what does it cost to run your truck? What, what are your fixed costs? What are your variable costs? What does it cost? Bottom dollar, break even price for you to operate your equipment. A lot of folks don't know. I really think that the number should be higher than 10.5%, but that's, that's the responses. <clears throat> now in fifth position, was lack of knowledge and basically folks said listen we just we just didn't have knowledge behind it it was uh you know trial trial by fire really did the best we could but it wasn't good enough we went out of business next the number six was wrong uh wrong mindset 8.8 percent .8 of folks said they had the wrong mindset and what they meant by that was that uh basically uh, one way that I really liked someone responded, he said, I became an owner operator. I owned the equipment, but I forgot to operate it. And so that's what happened. A lot of folks became owner operators, but they continue to operate as if they were company drivers. You can't do that. As an owner operator, you have a lot more expenses, a lot more responsibilities, and you're going to actually work surprising to many folks. You're going to work harder and drive more and have a lot more responsibilities than you did as a company driver. Uh, yeah, definitely wrong mindset. The mindset is everything in business. Now that was 8.8% of folks and 6.1% of folks in, uh, in position number seven simply said they were lazy. They were too lazy. They spent too much time at home, not behind the wheel, driving the truck. They were too lazy. Number eight, number nine, number 10 are pretty simple. Number eight was taxes. Number nine was insurance costs and fuel costs came in as number 10. 2.8%, 1.7%, and 1.7% respectively. So as we can tell, you know, taxes, insurance, and fuel costs were not the reason that put out uh, people out of business. You know, a lot of people say, oh, there's just too much taxes, too much regulation, there's just insurance is through the roof. I'm always hearing about complaints about insurance being expensive. And it is. I mean, insurance has been on an up and up consistently. We made some videos about that. Certainly, you know, take a look at the card in the corner of this, uh, of this video, and you can go out to some of those videos. Fuel costs have gone up, et cetera, et cetera. Although, you know, 2020 was pretty good with fuel with the pandemic and everything uh you know <clears throat> definitely saved a lot on fuel but ultimately 
the, 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 the things that you want to look for are basically money management, but be better at managing your funds. Uh, you know, gross and gross and net are very different things. Make sure you're not spending what's coming in. Make sure you set aside, uh, you know, money for maintenance. And you know, in second place was maintenance costs. I mean, you got to understand. You make a lot of money in gross. You got to set aside some of that money is not yours. Most of that money is not yours. Some of that money you got to set it aside. That's truck money. If your truck hasn't broken down, hey, good for you. Awesome. Keep maintaining it. It will break. I guarantee you. And you want to make sure you have money set aside to be able to take care and maintain your equipment, whether it's a truck, your trailer. You know, you need new tires. Maybe the reefer you needs a little bit, a little bit of maintenance or whatnot, and uh, you got to know your operating costs. You got to know your, uh, you know, you got to be able to improve on your. If you're lacking knowledge in any area, you want to be out there. There's a lot of folks willing to help out. We're here to help out. If you have any questions, leave us a comment below. Let me know. I mean, are you? Do you agree with this? Do you struggle with any of these areas? You know, this kind of stuff really provides us with the content to pro, uh, to produce future videos that we know are going to be useful to you. Uh, so we don't produce fluff and stuff like that that may not be useful to you. Nevertheless, guys, if you haven't liked the video yet. Yeah, please hit that like button now. Hit that like button, smash it, make it blue. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, be sure you subscribe. We do these videos every Friday. Would love to have you. And uh, thanks for coming by. Hold on one second. I'm going to switch over to camera. We're going to look over the loads we book for our customers. And uh, we'll, we'll see. It was another great week. I'll tell you that, especially for reefers. Talk to you in a moment. Welcome back, guys. Let's take a look at some of these loads. We're going to start off with a dry van team coming out of Lebanon, Kentucky, going to Katitas, Washington. 40,000 pound load of pet food, $22.79 and a mile is booked at $5,000. Got them $2.19 per mile. Then Moses Lake, Washington, going to Easton, Pennsylvania. 44.5 on the weight, load of paper product, $26.05 on a mile is booked at $6,500. That's $2.50 a mile. Now, these guys, uh, they only ran for five days. They only booked two loads, yet they still grossed $11,500 for the week, ran 4,884 miles as a team at an average of 235 per mile. Did a fantastic job. They ran from uh, Midwest to the West Coast, then the East Coast. Ended up in a very good area for next week and grossed a lot of money while getting their miles. Next, we have a solo, uh, looks like a dry van, Lubbock, Texas, going with Tyler, Texas. 42,000 pound load of home goods. 443 miles booked at $1,100. That's $248 a mile. Then Longview, Texas to Memphis, Tennessee. 43.5 on a weight, load of clean plastics. 365 miles booked at $850, which got them $233 per mile. Then right out of Memphis, Tennessee to Ponca City, Oklahoma. 18,000 pound load of ointment samples, or basically lotion. 484 miles booked at $1,200. That got them $248 a mile. Then right out of Ponca City, Oklahoma to Blandon, Pennsylvania. 43.5 on the weight. This was a load of cardboard boxes. 1,301 miles that's uh, on this load booked at $3,700, which got them 284 per mile. Excellent job on this one. Ran for five days, Monday through Saturday, ended up grossing $6,850 in gross, 264 per mile loaded, and uh, started off with, uh, you know, basically west of Texas, went to the Midwest, then to the Northeast, as mentioned, a really great area. They ran 2,593 miles at an average of 264 a mile. Excellent job. Then we got a reefer coming out of San Antonio, Texas. This is a one pick three dropper. Uh, going to Concord, North Carolina, Pineville, North Carolina, and Suffolk, Virginia. Now, this was a load of Starbucks products, uh, 25,000 pounds on the weight. They were uh, you know, able to do a 34-hour reset while at home in North Carolina, so that worked out really well. 1,609 miles booked at 6,000 bucks, which got them 373 per mile. So again, really great miles, excellent rate, good money, and a reset at the house. Couldn't ask for more. Then Richmond, Virginia, uh, going to uh, Peoria, Illinois, and Chicago, Illinois. So one pick, two dropper. This was going to Chicago area, uh, you know, in a, in a good area for them. 1,003 miles booked at $2,395, 239 per mile average. And they're basically going to be in a fantastic area in their reef for, for next week. They ended up grossing $8,395, uh, ran 2,612 miles, ran Friday to Friday, ended up in the uh, Midwest. Uh, and ran an average of 321 per mile. Excellent, excellent job. Now, I get it, it's multi-drop, maybe inconvenient for some, some folks don't like it, but they got long runs, great money, very good averages, and ended up in a good area. I mean, sometimes, you know, sometimes it, it really pays to do some of these tougher loads. Now, next we have a vented van coming out of Omaha, Nebraska, going to Joplin, Missouri. This was 40,700 pounds load of uh, beverages, 333 miles booked at $1,500, which got them 450 per mile. Then right out of Joplin, Missouri to San Antonio, Texas, 
43.9 on the weight, load of mixed beverages. Actually, it was loaded from the same facility that they just delivered to, so no deadhead there. 622 miles, booked at $1,800, got them 289 per mile. Then out of Sugarland, Texas, going to Kansas City, Missouri, uh, 8,000 pound load of empty cans, lots of beverages, lots of cans, stuff like that. 766 miles, booked at $1,600, got them 209 per mile. Then right out of uh, Excelsior, I believe it was Excelsior, yeah, Excelsior Springs, M Missouri, going to Norfolk, Nebraska, 37,000 pound load of dry food goods. This one was booked at 1,300 bucks, uh, but ended up getting another four hours of detention at $140, uh, $140. so 309 miles booked at 1,440, got them 466 per mile, and finally, a two pick one dropper out of Elk Point, South Dakota, and a second in Schaller, Iowa, delivering in Wabash, Indiana, 42,000 pound load of seeds, uh, 675 miles booked at 2250, ended up getting them 333 a mile. So these guys finished off their week in a really grand way. Ran for six days, Friday to Thursday, grossed $8,590 in gross, 318 uh, per mile uh, average, that's loaded miles, 285 per, uh, per mile with deadhead included, ended up running 2,705 miles with 310 miles of deadhead in total. So, you know, short to medium loads, Midwest going, you know, and, and, and Texas loads, top dollars, and, uh, you know, vented van really taking advantage of this. Not very, you know, crazy heavy loads or anything like that, but really good money. 318 average and, you know, almost 8,600 bucks in six days. Good stuff. Uh, then we have a reefer coming out of Laredo, Texas, going to Sweetsboro, New Jersey. 41.8 on the weight. Uh, this was a load of avocados, 1,846 miles. Uh, booked at $5,500. These guys got $298 a mile for <laughs> a lot of miles. Then at, right out of Swedesboro, New Jersey, going to Tully, New York, 18,000 pound load of frozen food. This was a 3 a.m. delivery to Aldi store, uh, 250 miles, booked at 1,300 bucks. That got them 520 per mile. Then out of Rochester, New York, going to Aston, Pennsylvania, 35,000 load of non-hazmat chemicals. So the reefer stayed off on this one. It's a dry load, 348 miles, booked at 1,650, got them 474 a mile. And uh, finally, Denver, Pennsylvania, going to Winchester, Kentucky. 22.4 on the weight, load of dry goods, the reefer's off, 561 on the miles, 1350 booked, that's 241 a mile. And finally, a Walton, Kentucky, uh, Walton, Kentucky to Claysburg, Pennsylvania. 15,000 pound load of frozen chicken, 412 miles, booked at $1,600, got them 388 per mile. So Friday to Friday, grossed $11,400, uh, 334 per mile average. 312 per mile with deadhead, uh, 334 is loaded. Uh, they ended up running 3,417 miles, only 236 miles of deadhead on this one. Did a great job, they ran a lot of miles, very good week for this reefer, high gross, high averages. I mean, if you pay attention, they hit 11,400 as a, as, as a reefer solo, while the, while the dry van team ended up hitting 11,500. So, you know, good job for both of, the, both of these guys, but we can see that in this market currently, reefers are definitely doing better. Uh, now we also have a, a dry van solo coming out of Statesville, North Carolina, going, going to Gap uh, Gansevoort, uh, New York. Totally butchered that one. I know it. 3575, uh, 3571 on the on the weight. Uh, 3571 pounds. Load of tools and uh, general machinery. No touch to the driver. 773 miles booked at 2300 bucks. That's 298 a mile. Then uh, uh, looks like Shahari, New York, going to Chesapeake, Virginia. Uh, this was a full truckload of hay. The driver does this load every single week. So this is uh, kind of a consistent for him. 514 on the miles, 1400 bucks booked at 272 per mile. Then Franklin, Virginia going to Syracuse, New York, 549 miles. This was a 39 and a half thousand pound load of palletized peanuts. Uh, appointment uh, delivery, 549 miles booked at $1,600 and that's 291 a mile. Then right out of Shahari, New York, going to Chesapeake, Virginia, uh, got him a full truckload of animal feed. Again, a load that he does every single week, pretty standard for them, 514 miles, $1,400, booked at 272 a mile. And finally, did a, they did a multi-pick. So this one looked like two picks in Suffolk, Virginia, and a pick in uh, Cortland, Virginia. And uh, this one was 24,000 pound load of general goods going to Charlotte, North Carolina, 307 miles, uh, booked at 900 bucks, got them 293 a mile. These guys did another, this was a really good one. This was a dry van, ran Friday to Friday, $7,600 in gross, uh, ran 2,657 miles, 286 per loaded mile, 
And uh, I mean, th this basically, I mean, van on the East Coast running basically short miles, making really good money, uh, almost, you know, 7,600 bucks, ran their miles, got the dollar amounts, 286 average. I think they did a well, uh, did a good job. Next, we have an interesting one, and uh, I'll preface this one by explaining that the driver's uh, wife was feeling ill, and he really needed to be able to check in, uh, check in on her on a daily basis. And luckily, our guys were able to uh, make that happen. So, and in fact, he ran Friday to Wednesday, and he needed to uh, take her to the hospital on Wednesday. He was able to do that. So he started off in Indianapolis, Indiana, going to Elk Rapids, Michigan. It was a FAK load, 43 pound, 43k on the weight, 406 miles. Booked at 1300 bucks, got him 320 a mile. Then right out of Elk Rapids, uh, Michigan, going to Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, 41,000 pound load of uh, dry goods. 411 miles booked at 1100 bucks that's 268 a mile then green bay wisconsin and grand rapids michigan where he finished up 382 miles that's 1391 dollars booked that's 364 a mile 43,000 pound load of uh basically bagged limes it was a palletized load so that's good ended up grossing uh 3791 dollars in a short period only ran 1199 miles at an average of 316 per mile was able to take care of his wife take her to the hospital i really hope she's doing well uh, if you're seeing this video, certainly hope she's doing very well. And uh, I mean, overall, really, really great week. I mean, as you can see, Vans did great, Reefers did great, but in this case, I think uh, Reefers did certainly better. Um, in any case, you know, if you're looking to do just as well, if your dispatchers maybe aren't working out or, you know, you're not getting these kind of loads or maybe you're booking yourself and sick of uh, all the negotiations, paperwork, billing and invoicing, and just having to deal with the stuff and then later having to drive the loads, kind of uh, annoying. Now, we work with carriers who have their own MC authorities. We also lease on owner operators. You can get all the information by calling or texting us at 801-448-6363. You can also get more information on our website at aftdispatch.com forward slash go any of our web pages on our website will have a small uh, chat box just type in your information there i'll send it over to us we'll be in touch with you over the phone and uh, you can also click any of the learn more buttons on any of our web pages or go to aftdispatch.com forward slash go fill out the forms and uh, you'll get more information over email we will get in touch with you over the phone we'll discuss this answer any questions and until next week guys stay healthy be wealthy take care